subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. A set of ancient footprints that point to an unknown species of early humans and how the earth may have gotten its water from the sun. These are some of the stories that we talk about on this episode of Scientifics. I am Mohana Basu and every week on the Prince Scientifics, I take you through some of the top science stories of the week from across the globe. There may have been more than one type of early human species coexisting some 3.7 million years ago, according to researchers who re-examined fossilized footprints that were discovered in 1976 in Tanzania. The oldest evidence of upright walking in the human lineage are footprints of an ancient human species called Australopithecus afarensis, the species of the famous partial skeleton Lucy. Another set of mysterious footprints was partially excavated at a nearby site in 1976, but dismissed as possibly being made by a bear walking upright on its hind legs because the tracks were so different. To determine what left these footprints, a team from University of Colorado, Denver went to the site and re-excavated and fully cleaned the five consecutive footprints. They identified evidence that the fossil footprints were made by an early human species, including a large impression for a heel and the big toe. The footprints were measured, photographed and 3D scanned. The researchers then identified four semi-wild juvenile black bears with feet similar in size to that of the footprints. Each bear was lured with a maple syrup or applesauce to stand up and walk on their hind legs across a trackway filled with mud to capture their footprints. The researchers captured over 50 hours of video on wild black bears. They realized that the bears walked on two feet less than 1% of the total observation time, making it unlikely that a bear made those footprints. This is because no footprints were found of this individual walking on four legs. As bears walk, they take very wide steps, wobbling back and forth. They are unable to walk with a gait similar to that of the footprints that the researchers found. Similar research with chimpanzees further confirmed that these footprints actually belong to the early humans that were different from the species of Lucy. Also this week, scientists have found that two intense periods of volcanism likely triggered a period of global cooling and falling oxygen levels in the oceans, which caused one of the most severe mass extinctions in Earth's history. The researchers studied the effects of volcanic ash and lava on ocean chemistry during a period of extreme environmental change around 450 million years ago. This period brought about intense planetary cooling which led to a mass extinction event during which about 85% of species dwelling in oceans were wiped out, reshaping the course of evolution of life on Earth. Previously, researchers have suggested that global cooling was driven by an increase in the phosphorus in the oceans. Phosphorus, which is one of the key elements of life, determines the pace at which tiny aquatic animals like algae can use photosynthesis to convert carbon dioxide into organic matter. These organisms eventually settle to the seabed and are buried, ultimately reducing the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which then causes cooling. The team identified that two large bouts of volcanic activity across the globe, occurring in parts of present-day North America and South China, coincided very closely with the two peaks in glaciation and extinction. The team discovered that widespread blankets of volcanic material laid down on the sea floor during this period would have released sufficient phosphorus into the ocean to drive a chain of events, including climatic cooling, glaciation, widespread reduction in ocean oxygen levels and mass extinction. Meanwhile, paleontologists in Chile have discovered the remains of a dinosaur that had a deadly armored tail that has not been seen in any other dinosaur before. According to the team, the tail would have looked like a flat sword. The dinosaur's remains helped researchers learn more about the history of the evolution of Ankylosaur. 
According to the team, the remains suggest that when the supercontinent Pangaea broke apart during the Jurassic period, that is 201 million to 145 million years ago, it led to extreme differences between ankylosaurs on the northern supercontinent Laurasia and those on the southern supercontinent Gondwana. The new species had been named Stegosaur elengansin. Its well-preserved skeleton is about 80% complete and was found in rocks dating between 71.7 million and 74.9 million years ago in February 2018. The specimen was roughly 6.5 foot long. By reconstructing the skeleton, researchers were able to also make a 3D artist impression of what the dinosaur possibly looked like. Also this week, scientists have discovered an unusually massive black hole at the heart of one of the Milky Way's dwarf satellite galaxies called LEO-1. According to the researchers, the finding could redefine our understanding of how galaxies evolve. Unlike most dwarf galaxies orbiting the Milky Way, LEO-1 does not contain any dark matter. By measuring its gravitational pull on the stars, researchers were able to get an estimate of its dark matter content. The faster the stars are moving, the more matter there is enclosed in their orbits. The team wanted to know whether dark matter density increases towards the galaxy's center. The researchers realized while studying data from the galaxy that it has a disproportionately massive black hole at its center about as massive as the Milky Way's black hole. The researchers said the result was different from the past studies of LEO-1 due to a combination of better data and supercomputer simulations. The findings change what astronomers understand about galaxy evolution as there is no explanation for this kind of black hole in dwarf spheroidal galaxies, according to the team. In a new study, researchers propose that a rain of protons from the sun may be producing water all the time on rocks and dust throughout the solar system and that up to half of the Earth's water may have been produced this way. Researchers propose that water-rich asteroids are currently the best candidates for delivery of water as well as carbon-hydrogen compounds which together make life possible on Earth. However, water from asteroids contains specific ratio of ordinary hydrogen to a heavier kind or isotope called deuterium. If all of Earth's water were from asteroids, we would expect it to have the same ratio. But Earth's water has less deuterium, so there must also be some other source of water in space. The only body in the solar system with lots of hydrogen but a lower ratio of deuterium than Earth is the Sun. Researchers now propose that solar wind may have been the source of half of the planet's water. This is Mohana Basu, special correspondent at The Print. If you like our videos, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.